Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I talk how you can tell if your drone is remote ID compliant. Let's get to it. I get a lot of comments uh, on my YouTube videos, especially on remote ID. And one that has come up with remote ID is how do I know if the drone that I buy at the store or online is compliant with remote ID? How can I tell how to do that? In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how you can tell. A little bit of background, remote ID is a new capability being implemented by the FAA. It's a way to track drones when they're flying, there's certain technical information, the location, altitude, airspeed, also where they took off. This is being done in phases. There are two dates that you need to be aware of for remote ID. This video is being filmed in April of 2023. The first date is December 22nd, 2022. That was a, a date set by the FAA where all uh, manufacturers of drones had to uh, produce their drones to be compliant with remote ID. So that kind of happened in the background. So any drone being built today should be remote ID compliant. The other date that we need to know as modelers is when we need to actually follow the regulations for remote ID. That date is September 16th, 2023. From today, April of 2023 to September 16th, we can fly just like we always have. There's no need to be compliant with remote ID, but after September 16th, 2023, all of our drones, RC aircraft have to be um, remote ID compliant with a few exceptions that we'll talk about here in a moment. There are three ways to meet this new regulation of remote ID. The first one is to have the manufacturer build it in in the factory. As I mentioned, that should be happening right now. After December 22nd, 2022, all drones being manufactured for sale in the United States have to be have remote ID operating in them. The second way is to buy a remote ID module. That's a separate system that performs remote ID function. Um, so if you have an airplane like, uh, for example, my Pronto that I built myself, I would have to put the module in them to be remote ID compliant. The third methodology is what they call FRIA. It's an FAA recognized identification area. Those are areas typically by AMA clubs, other educational places, where there's defined airspace agreed to by the FAA where you can fly without the need for remote ID because they're organized activities, they have some safety guidelines, and FRIAs are do not require any remote ID at all. So how can you tell if the drone that you just bought or you're thinking about buying is remote ID compliant? How do you know? Before I get to that, just a little bit of background. There are two things that happen for map manufacturers in the background. The first is what they call a means of compliance. The means of compliance is a very technical description from a manufacturer or engineering firm that explains to the FAA the method they're going to use to meet the remote ID requirement. Once this is approved by the FAA, anybody following this means of compliance will produce a remote ID capability that meets their specifications. The other thing from the FAA, once you build a capability for a drone for remote ID is a declaration of compliance. This is a listed on the FAA website and it lists the drone maker, the model and serial number of drones that are compliant with the remote ID. So getting back to the original question, how do we know if the drone that we are buying is remote ID compliant? I actually wrote the FAA this morning with this question. Uh, there is a comment um, contact us form on the drone section of the FAA. And I gave the questions and to the FAA's credit, they get back to me in 30 minutes with a response. So it'll be pasted in the description. But what I'd like to do is read what the FAA says directly from the FAA on this matter. First of all, for your technical background, the requirement for remote ID is actually in the Code of Federal Regulations. These are all the listings of regulations by executive agencies. Title 14 is the FAA section. Under the Part 89, 89.525 states, no person may produce a standard remote identification unmanned aircraft unless it displays a label indicating that the unmanned aircraft meets the requirements of this part. The label must be in English, be legible, prominent, and permanently affixed to the unmanned aircraft. Then Part B says the same thing for the remote identification broadcast module. You just have to um, have a label in English, prominent, per permanently affixed to the broadcast module. Then the FAA goes on to say, 
There are still aircraft, quote, on the shelf that do not comply with Part 189. In other words, they don't have remote ID built in. After September um, 16th, 2023, those aircraft must either be equipped with an FAA-approved broadcast module or be operated within geographical boundaries of an FAA-recognized identification area. So that flows with what we said earlier. So essentially, you need the label. And here, let's take a quick look at a label that I pulled off the internet for Skydio drones. You can see that this is the um, label that goes onto the outside of the box and, of course, onto the aircraft itself. And this model is in the battery tray. It goes back to the declaration of compliance with all the information that proves that this model does meet the remote ID capabilities. So just to discuss the Skydio process for remote ID, I don't, I'm not selling the drones. I don't have any financial interest in them. But what they say on their website is after September 16th, 2022, that was the original date for manufacturers to be compliant. Every drone they built was remote ID compliant. So all of their drones are compliant. There are still some um, drones on the shelf that are not remote ID compliant from Skydio. But what they say, depending on the model, as it gets closer to the September 16th, 2023 date, they can um, activate a remote ID capability through a firmware update. Some older models may not be able to do this. You'll have to do a remote ID module for something like this. Rudy, are you in favor of remote ID? Another subject that comes up with remote ID that seems to cause a lot of angst with modelers are the remote ID modules. What will happen is the idea for recreational flyers, you get a module, you link your registration with this um, module registration, and that module is something that can be put into any RC aircraft you fly to make it remote ID compliant. The due date for this is not until September 16th, 2023, when remote ID has to happen, and there are very few remote ID modules for sale. There's one for $300 by a Czech company, Drone Tag. However, there is an update from that company and they have made a new remote ID that is really quite small. They're calling it a direct remote ID. This is a picture of what this direct remote ID looks like. You can see the one Euro coin next to it. A Euro coin um, is about the size of a quarter. And you see, this is a pretty lightweight system, pretty small, should not take too much power. This is available for drone manufacturers that want to have a remote ID capability for their drones. But this is an example of what is coming out on industry for remote ID capability for modules. A final note on remote ID. Remember, remote ID is tied to the registration. Uh, that's just how the FAA is working it. There are some drones that we do not require to register. They are lightweight drones. For example, this Guilos conversion I did of a um, Aranka. If the drone or RC model is under 250 grams or about 8.8 .8 ounces, you don't need to register it. So therefore, these smaller models don't need the remote ID. The idea of these models are so small, they just can't cause any damage to anybody uh, with them. So again, under 250 grams, no remote ID required. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. Uh, so it's an interesting update on the remote ID. The full text is in the description. I look forward to further updates on remote ID as we get closer to the September 16th implementation date.